Well, that sounds like holiday cheer to me. And we've got a good one for you here on Fox and FC West style, the San Francisco 49ers. And yes, those are the Seattle Seahawks. They need a win to stay alive in the playoff hunt. And welcome to the booth, everybody. Ron Pitts along my partner, Charles Davis. Happy holidays. Christmas is right around the corner, and so is Santa. But first, let's talk about a little football. The Seattle Seahawks, they have won three in a row. They are looking to get in the playoffs. They cannot lose. They come in. They fought hard to get back to 500 at 7-7. Seven and seven. You talk about the San Francisco 49ers. They have won the division title. They come in here with a little bit of a swagger. You can see it. You hear it when you talk to the guys. But that being said, they are chasing that first-round buy spot. That would mean one playoff game at home guaranteed. And not only that, they're continuing to chase respect around this league. They earned a great measure of it Monday night, beating a very physical Pittsburgh Steelers team in a playoff atmosphere. Well, they'll get a playoff atmosphere here today in Seattle. And the defense of the San Francisco 49ers is built to stop the run. No one over 100 yards in their last 36 games. Well, today, they get beast mode. They get Marshawn Lynch running at them. Strength versus strength. That is the matchup to watch in this game. And there is beast mode. Let's go down to the third member of our crew standing by on the sideline, Dre Aben. Drea. Coach, your team has won five out of the last six games. What's the key to the positive momentum on both sides of the ball and the surge heading into this game today? Well, we've done a great job with the football. We've taken it away from our opponents, and we've done a really good job of taking care of it, which will be a big charge of uh, this game today. If we can get that done, it'll make a difference. It's no secret how stout the 49er defense is. What's going to be the key to your offense, getting the most out of drives and making it happen out there today? Well, we're going to we got to run the football today, and they don't want you to. So if we can get that done, it'll make a difference. We're going to have to make some plays, but first off, we're going to run that ball. All right, Coach, best of luck. Let's send it back to you, Ron. All right, Drea, thank you very much. Mr. Sean Kemp, you remember him, the former Supersonic. He is raising the flag, the 12th man. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll called out the 12th man this past week. He said, we need everybody for this one. We'll kick it away. The Seahawks have won the toss. Leon Washington back deep, won't get a chance. And the Seahawks offense will take the ball at the 20, and they're getting at it already. And Charles, we talked about this. One team, the 49ers, they have won the division title last year. This title belonged to the Seattle Seahawks. Neither team has a love loss for each other. Not one bit. You take, take the coaches from their time in college, Pete Carroll at USC, Jim Harbaugh at Stanford, the way that they got after each other. Very chippy attitude from both teams because the Seahawks, they, they, they didn't like the way the first one went down. They were in that ball game and gave up a couple of kick returns that hurt them, but they love to be physical as does San Francisco. Expect more of that today. In the first matchup, the 49ers beat the Seahawks 33-17, a close game for the fourth quarter. Ted Ginn, who is not playing today, by the way, for the 49ers, broke it wide open with two big kick returns, one on a kickoff and the other on a punt. Play is stopped early here before we even get to the first play. Our referee today, Ron Winter, the man in the white hat, may have some words. No, he'll just raise the roof on this thing and keep this going. The most interesting, Ron, as they break the huddle, Pete Carroll told Dre Avent that running the football is paramount, and they come out with an empty set right out of the gate, no one in the backfield. First play, first throw, and a drop in and out of the hands of Doug Baldwin. Let's go back to the opening kickoff where we saw the guys getting frisky with each other. A huge double team block that drops C.J. Spillman from San Francisco. He takes exception, as do his teammates. And that's a mark of a good football team, Ron, as you well know. When one of your guys gets taken out, look at how everyone rallies to pick him up. That's, what, that's a big reason why San Francisco is 11-3 right now. That was Atari Bigby coming over and applying the wax on that kickoff. Pressure early and a throw. It's got to be on the money. Ricardo Lockett just brought up from the practice squad this week, the free agent, 43 big ones in a first down. Now, you talk about Lockett with the catch. Look at the throw. Jackson on the back foot. Justin Smith put the pressure in his face and knocks him down. Ricardo Lockett from Fort Valley State, 
was a Division II 200-meter champion, and he shows his speed and especially his hands on his first catch. The rookie free agent just brought up this week and had injury issues throughout the wide receiving core. And they'll put it on the ground to beast mode. Lynch, Marshawn Lynch, who has really turned it up here in the second half of the season. He's met initially by Deshaun Goldson. And a look at Tavares Jackson's numbers. This is a man earlier in the season injured his shoulder. Actually, the pectoral muscle tore half of it. They almost put him on injured reserve. He fought through it, went through extensive rehab, and is able to come back and play, and is playing better and better every week. Said that he went through about three, going through three hours of rehab per day. And now, fortunately, he's able to practice full out again. Lynch trying the right side. Not much is there. Bowman is there for the 49ers. A look up front. Golden Tate along with Ben Obamanu, your wide receivers, but the big play early there. You saw that one by Ricardo Lockett. The offensive line, they've had their changes this year, but they've been able to hold strong and move the piles for Lynch. Remember, they've lost 60% of their starters on the offensive line, and the other guys who have come in and played have played very well. Marshawn Lynch running the football effectively. Number 99, Alden Smith is up top. And that's a completion and a first down. Brian Jennings, the tight end, he'll pick up 18. Now, watch Tavares Jackson because the way Seattle plays, where they want to run the football first, is going to put a premium on Tavares Jackson being accurate and effective on third downs because you're going to be in hopefully third and manageable. He's going to have to be accurate and put the football on people as he did there with Zach Miller. Flip that on the other side. The other 86, that's Zach Miller with the completion and the first. And another completion. Golden Tate. Brooks with the hit. The 49er defense ranked very high. They have not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. 14 straight during the year. Carries over to 15 if you take the last game of last year. Teams have had to throw it in because the run defense has been stout. Quick throw. That's complete to Baldwin. Baldwin looking for the end zone. Baldwin in. drive first score of the day the Seattle Seahawks Doug Baldwin the former Stanford grad played for Jim Harbaugh at Stanford puts an early six up the extra point is good and the Seahawks get off to a quick lead here in Seattle and you just talked, Ron, about San Francisco not giving up a running a running play. Well, this is almost a run play because what you're going to do is have him come back here laterally. The block comes in here, and the pass goes laterally. So it's like a long handoff for a running play. Look at the block out on the corner by Obamano, number 81. And then Baldwin sees the alley and gets up into it. Baldwin's been a little gimpy this week, had an ankle injury, a little bit limited in practice but shows that he's ready to go on his first catch of the game, and the Seahawks off to a 7 nothing start. Seven plays, 80 yards, capped off the 13-yard touchdown to Baldwin. And let me make sure correction there. That was Golden Tate on the corner blocking number 81, Obamato 87. So Golden Tate providing the alley on the catch for Baldwin. An exclamation point there, coordinator has really prided himself in this defense, especially against the rush. But that time, Seattle able to do it with some big pass plays. And I like how Pete Carroll has sold all week long that we're going to run the football strength versus strength. And on this opening drive, they used the pass to set up the run initially. Williams on the run. Ginn Jr., he is inactive. Williams with a nice return. The ball is loose. 
It's a free ball. Boy, and here goes the scuffle. We talked about the energy in this one. The new division champs versus last year's division champs. Playoff implications for both teams still. Looks as though they will mark it as down by contact. Let's see. There's a knee down before the ball ever yeah. hits the ground. So that's an easy call, and the officials got it right. They nailed that one right out of the gate. And they didn't, and they came into this game expecting what we've seen, Ron, some of this chippiness. I flew in with one of the officials, and he said, we're prepared because we know how important this game is for both of these physical teams. First play of the day for the 49er offense. No place for Smith. He'll pull it down and get a nice gain there on first down, at least nine. Hawthorne pushes him out. Alex Smith, he has been very careful with the football. Only five interceptions on the season. And on the first play, we saw one of the other attributes that he has. Besides being very good with the football and accurate, his mobility is another part of his game, something that he brought with him from college when he ran the spread offense at the University of Utah. He picks up seven. Walker across the formation. Play action to Gore. Boot out the other side. Pressure in his face. That's Clemens. He's out of the pocket. He can throw that one away without a penalty. Chris Clemens, the sack man for the Seattle Seahawks, was on the pressure. A look at the 49ers up front. Frank Gore, over 1,000 yards rushing. Crabtree along with Williams. Williams filling in for Gett Jr. And keep an eye up front also. Jonathan Goodwin, the center, came up from New Orleans Saints. But Mike Yapati, Anthony Davis, the two youngsters at guard and tackle respectively, they represent the strength of the offensive line for the Niners. Third and three play is stopped. Looks like a the timeout yeah. was called timeout. by San Francisco. San Francisco. And that was called from the sideline. They didn't like what they saw, didn't like what the set they were in and what they were facing. Jim Harbaugh gets a sideline call. Well, on Friday, January 6th is one of the most anticipated bowl games of the season as eighth ranked Kansas State takes on sixth ranked Arkansas in the only Big 12 SEC showdown. That's in town. Our exclusive coverage of the 76 Cotton Bowl Classic live from Cowboy Stadium begins at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. January 6th, only on Fox. You know anything about that, Charles? You know a little bit about little it. Looking bit, forward huh? to working that game with Gus Johnson, and we should, we should have a blast. And you talk about two of the top 10 teams in the country. Kansas State, they earned the right to go to a BCS Bowl. They didn't. They got the next best opportunity going to the Cotton Bowl, and they're excited. Look at Patrick Willis. He will not be active today. Larry Grant will fill him in, in his place down at the bottom of the screen. You see Frank Gore, but movement early. Clemens may have been drawn up. We'll see. Here's Ron Winter. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 91. A five yard penalty that results in a first down. Nope, he was not drawn off. And that will be an easy giveaway first down for the 49ers. And with the 12th man in the fix, see Clemens to the left side of the screen, just gets off. There's no movement by anyone in the offensive line. I think he felt like he had something in the snap count. But that blunts the effectiveness of the 12th man when you give away free, easy first downs on a third down play. Gore will move to the backfield. He hasn't touched the ball yet. This is his first carry, looking to bounce it outside. There goes Frank Gore, but a nice open field tackle. Atari Bigby brought in as a free agent from Green Bay this season prevents what could have been a much bigger game. One of the things to keep an eye on in this one is you have two of the better tackling teams in the NFC playing against each other today. When guys get a chance in the open field, in tight, what have you, normally the first guy to make contact has an excellent opportunity to bring people down. That's a very tough thing to do, especially an open field tackler. Kendall Hunter checks in. Hunter will get the ball. Hunter at about midfield, going backwards.
The Seattle Seahawks defensively they have played better and better throughout the season and it starts with the guys up front Clemens as we've said he will rush the passer Red Bryant continues to make big play after big play all season long. And I love the linebackers David Hawthorne in the middle KJ Wright the rookie playing well. And how about the corners Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner. 6-3, respectively, have done very well out on the corner for the Seattle Seahawks. Browner with six interceptions. Third and two. Quick throw. It's caught. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like a first down. That's Crabtree, but let's check the mark. It's right in front of our line. Our line is not the official spot, though. Cam Chancellor with the tackle they will measure that was good coverage by Cam Chancellor the big tall safety 6 3 232 pounds comes in front almost knocks it away from Crabtree and really nice concentration by Crabtree in catching the football off the up the second clutch the Seahawks as we mentioned early at seven and seven they cannot lose from here on out they have a wild card shot but they have got to win. They're in a three way tie in the chase for that spot along with the Giants. And that's short along with the Giants. And, and, and don't think for a second that if you're Seattle that you come that you bring your defense off the field right now. That's right. You make sure you leave your defense out there with the idea that Jim Harbaugh is likely to go for it. This type of this this portion of the field the type of team that he has built that he wants a tough hard running group with a Frank Gore in the backfield. He's shocked if he did anything but go for it here. Giants Chicago Arizona fighting for this wild card spot but this is a fourth down in inches. This is man up time right here. second effort and clearly he did there let's check the spot though they might try to move it back you never know I, I think that he got it and it was like what too. you said which was the second effort Ron I thought if, if there's ever such a thing as a patient sneak that one was by Alex Smith because watch how he gets jumbled up in there and it looks like the initial part is stopped now watch him slide to his left just a little bit and fall forward Boy, it's a good actually, I actually think he, he got way more on that play than possibly what they gave him on the spot. It's a good thing Leroy Hill doesn't keep his head up because if he does, he'll see Smith is still moving and push him back. But a great second effort there by Smith. Yeah, I thought it was intelligent running by Smith to be able to slide left and create enough of a gap, which I think he got the first down. They stretch that chain, and it's a half a ball or more over for the first down. So Jim Harbaugh in his first year as head coach, the 48-year-old has had a, a heck of a run. Boy, I tell you, he's got a lot of people complimenting the 49ers and mentioning his name for coach of the year. And, and rightly so. And look at that, though. They're doing it without getting things done on offense. First, <laughs> since week nine, not a touchdown. 16 field goals in the first half. Play action holds the linebackers. The deep out is there. That's Crabtree. Crabtree with another first down, 13 yards on the pickup. Brandon Browner on the coverage. I had a chance to talk with Trent Balky, the general manager in pregame. And we didn't talk a whole lot about the, you know, the game and football. But to me, he and Jim Harbaugh are in sync as a GM and a head coach. Style of play, type of players that they want, big, strong, physical guys. They're both trained that way in the, in the, world, in the world of football. And the 49ers are reflecting that. First and ten looking screen doesn't develop and it looked as though Kendall Hunter got caught up in the wash. And you take a look at Alex Smith on that play and this is one of those ones that we're not going to clip for a highlight film later. OK <laughs> we know that but as a smart intelligent play part of why the 49ers have had the renaissance they've had and why Alex Smith has had the renaissance he's had Jim Harbaugh 
came in, took the job, and said, right away, I want Alex Smith to be my quarterback. And they've worked together hand in hand all the way through. And Alex Smith is having a type of year now that people are talking about Pro Bowl mention. Second down throw going deep for Crabtree. Check that. That's Vernon Davis. And Davis, is he in? No, he's out. That's Vernon Davis split all the way wide. So when you have a tight end who can do that, and the reason that's not going to go as a catch, juggling the football as he goes out of bounds. Watch. All right, ball is now still in his hands. There's one foot down, second foot coming out before he possesses it. Excellent job by the officials on target. As he bobbles it, that takes away the idea that it's actually a catch. So the official stays with it, doesn't get two feet down while possessing the football. But, but when you get Vernon Davis out wide, matched up, and get an opportunity, that's an extra receiver for you, although he's listed as a tight end. Third and 10. Crabtree, does he hold on? No. Bobbled twice. Richard Sherman on the coverage. It's fourth down. The coverage was really good by Richard Sherman. Watch as he takes on Crabtree. The coverage is excellent. Now, Crabtree sees his quarterback in trouble, so he converts his route and takes it upfield. Sherman does a nice job staying with him. But right there at the end, when he stops, mistimes his jump, that gave Crabtree an opportunity to come down with it, unable to do so. 52 yards out for Akers. Going left, it'll stay left. Seattle's defense holds. Well, Wednesday, January 18th, TV's biggest phenomenon, America. Francisco, they went for it for fourth and short, on fourth and short out near midfield. I love the mentality of Jim Harbaugh. Playoffs already in the hip pocket. Still showing his team, we're pushing forward, trying to get that by and make sure we're secured in home field. But how about Seattle shutting it down with no points after they picked it up? Another empty backfield. Jackson in trouble. That's a sack. Ray McDonald. And they're calling this game in reverse a little bit for Seattle. All we've heard about is Marshawn Lynch. Strength versus strength running the football. Beast mode. But if you noticed early in the game, they want to throw the ball early in the count. First down. First play of the game, they spread it out. Empty set, throwing the football. Came back with a big throw to lock it. Now, they're in a position where they have to throw the football on second and long unless they decide to run draw. A loss of nine on the sack. Lynch, Lynch is through. Lynch, midfield. Close to a first down. Pushed out by Whitner, a pickup of 19. And how about that on second and long? Now watch everyone coming right at you on the screen. Everyone married up on the blocks. And then once Lynch gets out there, there's Robinson, 26, the fullback leading. Look on the backside there. Jean-Pierre with a nice block, number 61. And then the vision of Lynch and the ability to cut and get to the sideline. You talk about third manageable, third and two. And they'll go back to Lynch. He'll manage the first, almost had the ball ripped out. But he'll go forward for the first down. Sapuaga finally able to bring him down. Third 1,000-yard rushing season for Lynch. And watch right here, the fullback. The fullback takes you to the point of attack. Michael Robinson, look at him, cutting back inside with a block on Navarro Bowman, number 53, to help create the hole for Marshawn Lynch to pick up the first down. Ron, they were second and very long. And the big run by Lynch sets up third and two, and they pick up a first down momentum going their way. They switch it up. They'll give to Leon Washington. Washington for a couple inside, but going back to Lynch, went over the 1,000-yard rushing mark last week, and that big win over Chicago in Chicago, the first Seahawk running back over 1,000 yards since, believe it or not, Sean Alexander back in 2005. And that's the mentality that the Seahawks felt that they had gotten away from during this season. 
running the football first, making it a priority, establishing a, an identity. They went back to it before the Dallas game. They've been five and two since. Play action, pressure, wild throw. Won't have a chance intended for Tate. Paris Harrelson applying the pressure. And he's a good pass rusher, but we're going to see a lot of today also of number 99, Alden Smith, who was an absolute terror on Monday night against Pittsburgh with two and a half sacks, seven quarterback hits, and two tackles for loss. The rookie out of Missouri is a tremendous pass rusher and complements everything they do on defense for San Francisco. Or set in the backfield. Going to the corner, going to be a tight fit. Well covered there by Carlos Rogers, intended for Baldwin. Tight fit indeed. There was no fit. Carlos Rogers had that covered so well and had some help over the top. If that one got through, it was simply because Carlos Rogers missed it. Really well played by San Francisco. So fourth down time now, and John Ryan ranked third in the NFC. We'll try to kill this one inside the 10 yard line if he can. Kyle Williams is deep. Nearly blocked, but may get it off. Williams secures the fair catch at the 10 yard line. I'd like to welcome those of you watching the Giants Jets game as you can see the Giants with the win 29-14 over the Jets and oh well all that talking Rex did failed once again. Giants ready to play trying to secure a playoff spot for themselves trying to keep themselves in the hunt right here. Jim Harbaugh already has a playoff spot the head coach of San Francisco 49ers but he wants more. He wants to ensure home field in the initial part of the playoffs. Seahawks out to a quick 7 nothing lead they came out throwing the ball making some big plays. Gore, Gore is through. Gore for first down as he stretches it out to the 22-yard line, a pickup of 12. Early in this game, the Seattle Seahawks have come out and established themselves that they're going to be as physical as San Francisco. The other part they've done is they've, they've sold everyone on the idea they're going to run the heck out of the football, but they've thrown it effectively early, and that's how they scored their first touchdown. A swing pass to Doug Baldwin, a little tight, a wide receiver screen. San Francisco, they want to stay aggressive, just have not been able to cash in on their first drive. Walker sets up on the other side, Gore downhill, picking his way, maybe a couple. Sherman coming up from the corner spot. It's interesting that you're almost talking about mirror images with these two teams and the way they're playing right now. Both of them want to run the football first. Both of them want to be stout defensively, take away the run from the other team first. Effective in the passing game, but they don't want the passing game to carry them. This could be one of those old-fashioned rock and sock em type of football games. Well, there have been a couple punches thrown already. Quick throw outside. Crabtree putting the stiff arm up on Sherman, and Sherman body slams him about a yard shy of the first. And that's some of that physical play you're talking about, Charles. And we're going to see that all game long. And take a look at Alex Smith orchestrating up there. All right, some of this stuff is going to be live for what he for his wide receivers. Some of this stuff is just simply shenanigans. <laughs> what do you do? You know, wanting the defense to think over there, wanting them to have, have an idea, say, hey, hey, maybe we picked up the key, the cue. But in fact, he's giving them nothing. Crabtree, three catches, 17 yards. Gore straight ahead. Looks like he got it. The 49ers have already gone for a fourth in inches. They picked it up. Their drive stalled on the previous possession. Just beyond the 40-yard line. Akers came on and missed the field goal. So a first down for the 49ers. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Split out down to the bottom of your screen. 
nobody protecting Smith in the backfield. The pressure's good. Going deep. And it's incomplete. A flag goes down intended for Vernon Davis. Smith says it's against the Seahawks. Holding. Defense number 39. Five yard penalty and a first down. That's going against Brandon Browner. And Alex Smith, you talk about a career revival. All right, look at the numbers, how they've increased as a starter, completion percentage, passer rating, but this is the one that I'm cued in on. Interceptions per 100 attempts. He's thrown the ball 110 times now consecutively without an interception. He's only thrown five all year. They take care of the football. The 49ers are tough to beat. Mato slips. And I'm not sure how much of a chance he would have had anyway. And it looks like Richard Sherman is playing linebacker instead of corner. He's been involved in a couple tackles. Yeah, so he, he gives lie to the words cover corner, doesn't he? You know, when people talk about, I'm just a cover corner. You know, you want to be a complete corner, a guy can come up and make plays. And Alex Smith, we talk about the, his, how well he takes care of the football, the things he does in the pocket. He's got this team believing in him now. They're not trying to work around him. They're working through him. And that's why that's a big part why they're 11 and three. And Braylon Edwards checks in for the first time today. He's been bothered by a bad knee. They'll go back to Hunter. Hunter with a nice move and Hunter at midfield. Hunter will pick up 10 close to the first down if not having it. Cam Chancellor along with Thomas on the tackle. And what we're seeing now, watch the offensive line for the 49ers. See everyone's locked up on some Red Bryant 79. They get him moving in one direction, and Hunter cuts back inside of him. This offensive line for the 49ers starting to establish themselves a little bit here on this drive. Jonathan Goodwin at center, number 59, is the focal point. Four back in. The outlet to Gore, he's got a lot of green. Another first. Gore inside the 40-yard line. Brought down by Sherman, a pickup of 13. When you have that many bodies flying around you and all that, that, that crashing of pads and noise, you're not supposed to be comfortable back there. You're supposed to be harried. You're supposed to speed up everything. Alex Smith looked anything but uncomfortable back there. Looked like he felt the presence, felt the rush evaded it by stepping out to the side, checked down to the back for a nice game. Gore pushing the left side, trying to get around the corner. Too much speed. Browner came up. K.J. Wright, the rookie out of Mississippi State, was there as well. Guarantee that the reason that they're able to make that play is that they could not control the end of the line of scrimmage for the Seattle Seahawks. That's Delaney Walker, the 49er tight end, shaking up. We'll try to see what happened. We'll be back. Lost his lid. We'll be back after this. The 49er medical staff tending to Walker. You saw right before we went to break, the helmet flying off. Looked like it was kicked off. See, so he, he's trying to block K.J. Wright, and as he comes by running wow. to the football, that's number 56, Leroy Hill, and his leg hits the head of Delaney Walker. Hill, 56, as he's running to the ball, see his knee ends up hitting Dwayne, Delaney Walker right in the head and the jaw area and snaps his helmet off. Looks as though they are taking Walker out on the cart. Second and ten give to Gore. Gore almost turned the corner. David Hawthorne shut him down as you see Walker being carted off the field. A pickup of six by Gore. And that is the end of the first quarter, a quarter that quarter. has seen a lot of action early. The Seahawks with a 7-0 lead here in Seattle.
tenth play of the drive coming up as we start the second quarter. Pressure on Smith. Smith will go down. The 49ers one of four on third down thus far. And before this ball was snapped, Pete Carroll, the head coach of the Seahawks, is telling his defensive line, don't jump. They jumped earlier in a third and, third and less than five situation, gave him a free first down. This time, the coverage is terrific in the secondary, which allows the rush to materialize and get to the quarterback. Leroy Hill's the beneficiary of the Flags are down, and it does. The 40th. So the 51 yard field goal is good. They'll call it officially 53. And that makes 39 field goals now for David Akers. One away from tying Neil Rackers for the single season most. Leon Washington is back deep. He hasn't had a kick return for a touchdown this season. He's got the second most in the NFL in NFL history, and we'll get this one out to the 20-yard line. A gain of 24. 7-3 game here in Seattle. These two coaches know each other very well. They uh, butted heads, so to speak, down at the college level. Harbaugh was at Stanford, Pete Carroll at SC. And uh, let's just say they did not come out and exchange pleasantries before the game. To an extent, to an extent, they, it was a changing of the guard. You know, as Pete was exiting, Jim was coming in, and Jim took Stanford to the top of the heat. Two and one over Carroll at the college ranks, including one this year, won the opener down in San Francisco. That's a pickup of five. And as we said, you know, usually coaches come together at the beginning of the game there and shake hands and do all that. One was clearly on one end, the other was on the other end. And part of the reason, Jim Harbaugh with a two to one advantage in college in terms of wins and the season opener this year. San Francisco beat Seattle. Three to one, Jim Harbaugh over Pete Carroll, although neither would say, well, it's not me, it's my team. And that's what they're trying to correct now. But the rivalry was born in college and it continues to this day. Lynch, Lynch fighting, still going. Lynch will have the first down and then a couple more as he's out to the 31-yard line. Let's go down to Los Angeles, our first update of the day. Here's Kurt Menefee. All right, fellas, an injury for Tony Romo. Hits his hand on the helmet of Jason Babin. Leaves the game. You can see the swelling there on his right throwing hand. They've kept him out. Stephen McGee now quarterback for the Cowboys as they trail 7-0 against the Eagles in the second quarter. Ron Andro. Wow, Stephen McGee, a tough spot to go into. He played at Texas A&M, and you see the Cowboys playoff scenario, what they need to do to make it to the postseason. They need two wins. Pick up a six by Lynch. The first down throw. Obamanu showing some strength there, hit hard. Larry Grant was there. And I continue to look at this offense of Seattle and see Daryl Bevel, their offensive coordinator, trying to call this game a little bit backwards, a little bit in reverse. What I mean by that is they are a run first team. Run first, run second, run last. But right now what Daryl Bevel's doing is giving easy throws to Tavares Jackson on first down against the run defense of San Francisco to try and loosen things up for their run game to have its effect later. Four set, four set, very close to the first down. I think he's got it. And Ron, that two-play sequence, I believe, encapsulates what we're seeing here today. First down throw by Tavares Jackson. Seven yards, brings up second and three. Second down, they're able to go to their bread and butter. A power run by Forsett that picks up a first down. So every coach wants four yards or more on first down. Get seven, your playbook expands, you can call what you want, and they're able to go back to what they like to do, which is run the football. First and ten throw, empty backfield, the easy out. The coverage is off. Culliver playing off. Now he gets up talking a little trash to Deion Butler. Yeah, 
and, and that just looked like a normal play. I mean, guy throws an out pattern, guy makes a tackle. Let's take a look. Goes to the top side of your screen. The out to Dion Butler. The tackle by Culliver. End of the play. Culliver comes up ready to go. Dion Butler's ready to go. And I was trying to figure out what set him off other than he tackled him. <laughs> I don't see, oh, maybe there's a little extra at the end. Dion Butler's got some knees in the back of his head. These two teams are going to be at each other all day long. Second down and four again. There's a lane for Lynch. And Lynch now starting to run against the 49er defense. He picks up 13. The 49ers giving up the least amount of rush yards per game at 71. Now Lynch starting to pour it on a little bit. He's over the 50-yard mark on seven carries. And I think that the offensive court philosophy of Seattle is gaining an advantage for his for the running game for Marshawn Lynch. Why? First down, throwing the football, setting up second and shorts. You're not running against the most effective run defense of San Francisco at that point. Inside, good tackle there, right in the hole. Zaplaga. And that was a first and ten run. How about that? Okay, so now you're running into the teeth of the San Francisco defense when they are kind of ready to go, got their run defense out there, got all the guys lined up first and tense, they're running down. That's one guy they don't have, which is Patrick Willis, their all-pro linebacker. Larry Grant, wearing number 54, is filling in for him today. They've been opening things up against the run defense. Easier passes for Tavares Jackson. Now it's second and long. Second and long. Let's see what they decide to do here. Willis fighting a hamstring. He's been bothering since... December 4th, wide open, and an easy catch in the first down. That's Cameron Mora. Flag goes down, but Mora has the easy first down. Let's see if it stands. I think it's going to go against Seattle. I think they're going to get Mora for pushing off, or someone pushing off in the secondary on the route. Pass interference. Offense number 87. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's Obamanu. This could be one of those pick routes. Okay, this is Obamanu, number 87. Watch him run his route. He's going to run inside. He's supposed to clear, but he bumps into the <laughs> bumps into Deshaun Goldson, number 38. And what you're supposed to do is bump him and get off and move into your route. Continue to look like you're running your route. If you stay there and get a second bump in, the officials are likely to say no. You're not running a route. You're actually blocking for the receiver before the ball's in the air. That one gets called back. Seattle's third penalty of the day. A total of 20 yards on the miscue. Second and long. Jackson in trouble. Jackson sacked. Bowman. A loss of six. Look at Grant running that route against a tight end. Underneath number 29. An excellent coverage. Chris. Third and 23, quick screen to Tate. Tate's going to have to do a lot of dancing. Alden Smith, the rookie, involved in this one. <laughs> At the end of the day, do you know what we have with these two teams? we got two teams who don't play to the whistle. They play to the echo of the whistle. All right, so they're going to take it all the way through and finish plays. Linemen like to come down the field for both teams and clean people off of their runners or receivers when they catch the football. They're both well-coached, well-taught, hustling teams. They're going to fight you for every inch. Notice yeah, how Jim teams. Harbaugh didn't yell at any one player. No. He just uh, yelled at the official. No, he's okay with it. And Pete Carroll on the other side is going to feel the same way. Ryan. Ryan goes down. We're going to have... A roughing the kicker or a running into the kicker, one of the two. Ball was spotted at the five-yard line. I think this one's going to go in favor of Seattle. Kicker going down, the punter going down, hit on the play. See Ryan punting the football. Running into the kicker. Defense number 96. Seattle has elected to take that foul. See, and that was 96 to Marcus Dobbs running into the kicker on the play. 
the kickers do a really nice job too because when they feel pressure coming Jim Ryan did that they'll leave their leg up there just a tad longer hoping you'll run into it there's a difference between roughing and running into the kicker one will incur the automatic first the other one will not they'll just mark this back 49er ball when we come back Seattle's in great shape here because of the penalty. They were able to turn it down and not worry about it because field position was great. Doug Baldwin caught the punt and downed it at the five yard line to help their defense. Gore trying to give the 49ers some breathing room. He'll take it out to the 10. KJ Wright is there, a pickup of five. The Seattle Seahawks need to win their final two games and they need for the Detroit Lions to lose. Right now the Lions currently are up big over the San Diego Chargers 17 zip. But they don't know that right now neither do the fans. A little bit of an update in that game in just a second. A throw and a drop. Very uncharacteristic for Vernon Davis. Let's go down to Los Angeles and Kurt Benefee. Well, the Detroit Lions have it going today against San Diego. Matthew Stafford hooks up with Kevin Smith. Three-yard score. They lead it 17-0 at the two-minute warning. Ron and Charles, if the Lions win today, they clinch their first playoff berth since 1999. Boy, is that city, is that state ready for that? In a big way. Yeah. In a long time since in the Lions in the playoffs, but they got to be careful. Philip Rivers can score. Third and five. Quick throw, knocked away. Hawthorne intended for Davis, and the 49ers will punt. You always talk about receivers having to win at the line of scrimmage to get into their route. Well, if the defensive back, look at his coverage by Brandon Browner. Crabtree trying to win. That's where they wanted to go with the football. Browner on his upfield arm, and he knew it. He knew he took that one away and forced Alex Smith to go elsewhere and force the incompletion. A win for the corner instead of the receiver at the snap of the football. The NFC Special Teams Player of the Week this past week, Andy Lee, number one in the NFC with a 50-yard average, will need all of that to get the 49ers out of trouble there. Give them some breathing room on defense. There's contact. Ball picked up by the 49ers on the move, but a flag goes down. Costanzo picks it up, but there was early contact. The returner must have a chance to catch the ball. And he was being engaged by a blocker, I think, off the initial, my initial view was that a blocker was in the vicinity on this play for Seattle. So let's see where the call goes. Interference with the opportunity to make the catch. Number 27, the kicking team. A 15 yard penalty and a first down. They call it on C.J. Spillman. Yeah, I don't know if he was able to get down fast enough and break down and make a play. So they go ahead and call C.J. Spillman for interfering with the returner and his opportunity to catch the ball. It looks like there's simultaneous contact, if not on the other side first. And, Ron, you did this for a living, returning kicks. Look at Leon Washington. See, Phillip Adams, 40, is supposed to be helping yeah. him by blocking Spillman off. Well, Spillman gets there about the same time as Phillip Adams. Both of them guilty to me of kick-catch interference. By letter of the law, I think it was the right call mm -hmm. because Spillman didn't really get off of the play enough. But Adams is right there, too, blocking the, the view of his own kick returner. Bring out, bring out. Nice field position here. This is excellent field position here for Seattle. If they want to take any type of a shot on an early down. Lynch, Lynch is starting to get it going here. Squeezes out a nice run there on the other side of the 40. Partners, we started this game. We knew it was going to be physical, and these two teams didn't really agree with each other. They don't even agree to disagree, and it's been like that all game. 
chippy play all the way around. Physical, a little bit of extra at the end of each play. Guys coming up, and neither side is going to back down. Look at this. Maricos, it's a double team on a, on a, kick, on a kick play situation. It will be like that all game long. Marshawn Lynch is through inside the 30. Still moving his feet. A pickup of nine. Carrying tacklers with him, Larry Grant. Finally with the wrestle down. And how do you end up winning battles of chippy play with these types of runs? Watch the contact. Okay, he runs through one. He runs through two. He runs through three before they're finally able to get control. Dante Whitner's one of the better hit, better tackling safeties in the league. He runs right through him. Lynch with 72 yards rushing on the day already. This is Washington, and Washington for about three, maybe four. The Seahawks drew first blood. Touchdown strike of 13 yards. Jackson to Baldwin. And I think this offensive line of Seattle starting to find its groove a little bit. These back-to-back -back big runs, they love it. They want to be able to fire out and hit people. Max Unger right there, the center, number 60. Second and five. No place to go. Hemmed up perfectly inside. McDonald is there first. And that's, and that's the way to put him down. Gang tackling. Well, this January, Fox returns to the octagon with an incredible UFC fight night triple header highlight by uh, the former light heavyweight champion, Rashad Evans, and undefeated Phil Davis, plus two explosive middleweight bouts. The UFC fight night triple header on Fox is live from Chicago Saturday, January 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox. No better city to have an event like that. Chicago, you got to be a tough guy living that city. Absolutely, third and four. Got to be a tough guy to play out here today. And that's complete for first down, Doug Baldwin. And that's a receiver who understood where the first down marker was and where he had to go to get it. Doug Baldwin, an undrafted free agent out of Stanford. Look at what he's done versus guys in the league who were picks. A.J. Green was one of the top picks in the draft. Greg Little from North Carolina. Torrey Smith for the Baltimore Ravens. Julio Jones, a top pick. The Atlanta Falcons and Doug Baldwin's production rivaling, equaling, bettering some of those players. Really hasn't practiced much all week long. Bothered by an ankle. Didn't look like it bothered him there. That out well covered. Rodgers is all over it. Rodgers, along with Goldson, six interceptions apiece. They have been supreme in the secondary for the 49ers this season. And how about the offseason acquisitions and pickups? You know, we always talk about the, the offensive side. Last week, we saw the Houston Texans. They got Jonathan Joseph in the offseason acquisition at corner. It's helped transform their defense. Carlos Rogers helping do the same thing here in San Francisco. Seahawks inside the red zone. Lynch missed tackle there by Bowman, still moving his feet. Grant is there to help clean him up. You wonder where Lynch gets the power. They say he lost about 10 pounds coming into this season, but you'll watch him run, and he just keeps moving and moving. You're talking 5'11", about 2'10". In the car on the way over, you were talking about something else, but you always talked about leverage. Low, low, low person wins. Look at how he takes the hit from Bowman, but he runs with such a low center of gravity, able to keep his feet, bounce up, and then he lowers his shoulder and his head again, trying to take on someone else. This guy does not run to daylight. He runs to contact, and then he runs through it. Empty set, quick throw coming. There it is, complete first down. Butler, and a little after, coming from Dante Whitner, but he's already got the first. We'll go back to something we talked about early in this game, Ron. Very difficult as a quarterback to be a so-called game manager when they're asking you to make throws on third down time and again because you run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. So they gave him opportunities early to get a little bit of rhythm throwing the football. Now those third down throws he has to make, it hasn't been after 10 straight runs where he has to make it. He's in a better rhythm and he's completing them. 
Lynch back in. A missed tackle. Lynch still going. Lynch inside the five yard line. <laughs> and this crowd, which needs no extra encouragement, gets it every time he runs the football. He's like an electrical charge, a current that runs through this stadium and gets things started. 80 yards in the first half as we hit the two minute warning for Marshawn Lynch. Seahawks knocking at the door again. Skittles is the prize of choice for Marshawn Lynch when he vaults into the end zone. Our crew had to drive halfway to Pullman to find some Skittles because these fans, they buy them up. They want to shower them with them if he does get into the end zone. He gets the call. It's close. Is he in? No sign yet. No. McDonald there on the tackle. Remember, the San Francisco 49er defense has not allowed a rushing touchdown or a 100-yard rusher all season long. Timeout was called by San Francisco. They have one left. They must be trying to conserve a little bit. Hopefully, we get the ball back on offense and get one last drive in. You just mentioned how proud they are on defense of having not let in a touchdown on the ground all year. We're going now to third and very short. The number one object is to win the game. We know that for Seattle. But you also know that they pride themselves on being physical and running the football, too. I think they'd like nothing more than to take it right here and take a shot at running the football into the end zone against that defense of San Francisco. I think they go strength versus strength here and try and pound it in. I don't think they go trick them. I don't think they go play action and fool them. I think Marshawn Lynch is coming right back at them straight away. You can see he reaches the ball there. The key is where they determine progress stopped or right. him down. Well, down right there. there, he looks like he's down and is reaching well after the play is over. I don't blame him. Good opportunity. I'd be surprised here if there's anything but power straight out of him. Play stopped again. The last play is being reviewed. Now, the only thing I can I can come up with on the review is was he on top of a defender as he hit the ground reaching the football across. That's right. Because if he's on top, then he's not a, he's not down. He's still in the air. We are under two minutes. All reviews in this case have to come from upstairs. This one will be from upstairs. We're in review mode right now, coming from upstairs in the booth, whether or not Lynch got over. Didn't look like it from our angle, but they're giving it a double check. It, it, my thing would be, I'm not sure how you can see through that mass of people to overrule the initial call that's on the field. Watch as he disappears into the pile. All right, it appears from this view that he's down there, and now he's going to reach late. So if he's on top of someone and they're saying he's not down, that would be the only call I could see, but I'm not sure how you can see enough in there that you can say definitively, down, not down, I'm going to overrule it. The call on the field was that he was down short of the goal line. I think that will stand. And for Lynch, boy, what a resurrection it's been, so to speak, for his career. Came out here in a trade from Buffalo in 2010. You know, 2007, 2008, he comes into the league. Two back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. The next year, he gets in some trouble off the field. That carries on onto the field, gets shipped out here, and he's been a different guy ever since. The difference maker since he arrived in Seattle and will always be remembered for the great touchdown run in the playoffs against New Orleans last year, one that says, set off a little seismic activity. They measured it almost like an earthquake on the Richter scale and has kept going since that time. He gives them an identity of what they want, and how they run the football, the toughness that they have. What's, that, what's their motto? Earn everything? Mm -hmm. And you see that on 
many of the memorabilia and posters and things around here. He's that type of a football player who earns every inch of every run and finishes those runs going forward and wanting people to avoid contact later. Ron Winter on his way back out. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner's left leg was down before the ball broke the plane to the goal line. The third down, short of the goal line. Charles, what does this do to San Francisco now if Seattle scores? That's, you know, assuming you get the extra point, that's a 14-3 game. Territory that the 49ers haven't been in very often this season. Haven't been in it, but you know something? That's why Jim Harbaugh was calling the timeout. Yeah, he wants to he wants to San have a chance to go back downfield on offense. It's not just preparation for today. It's preparation for the playoffs. If we get in this position again, guys, we've been there before. Let's see how mm -hmm. we react. Plus, you know as well as I do, they're not conceding anything anyway with their defense. They're not saying that they're just going to automatically score. Quick snap. There's a mix up. Jackson has the ball. He's going to try to do it himself. And he does not get in. Great hit. Shoulder to shoulder. Carlos Rogers says no. Some kind of mix up on the snap. They botched it. And now they bring on the field goal unit. You said it. They botched it, meaning Seattle. Not everyone went on the snap count. But once they botched it, San Francisco made them pay for it because they played through the rest of the play. And Carlos Rogers bumps Jackson out of bounds. So guess what? No one has run the football into the end zone thus far against the San Francisco 49ers. So that being said, Steven Hauschka will try from 19 yards out. He does a missed opportunity for more points for Seattle, but they'll take the points. As we get close to the half, shoulder to shoulder, that's a clean hit, 10-3. So what happened on this play? Watch Michael Robinson, the fullback, and Pat McQuiston, the left tackle. McQuiston moves a little bit early. I'm wondering if Robinson sees that movement and thinks the play is going to be whistled dead, because he never goes. And then Jackson's looking back, wondering, wondering, and now he's just trying in hot pursuit to try and get to the end zone, and Carlos Rogers doesn't let him do it. I'm wondering if Michael Robinson saw the movement early, thinks it's going to be whistled dead, when it's not whistled dead, You've got a live play, and you've got a botch play for the Seattle Seahawks. That's a golden opportunity. They let get by to have a chance. I mean, we don't know that they're going to get into the end zone. Right. But they didn't give themselves a, a, their best opportunity on that play to get into the end zone. Credit San Francisco with being alert and stopping them. Williams won't have a chance. That ball is in the paint. They'll take it at the 20 yard line. So the messed up snap, good hit on the sideline. Remains a seven point game. One thirty to play here in the second quarter and the first half. The 49ers with two timeouts. That booth review does not constitute a timeout for either team in a review situation. Smith holding the ball, a nice catch there. Edwards, Edwards, just shy of the first down. Let's go down to LA and check in with Kurt Menefee. Coming up with the Visa Halftime Report, we have scores and highlights from a busy Christmas Eve in the NFL, including the Giants winning the Battle of New York, the Steelers having no problem with no Big Ben, and a Cincinnati touchdown that might be the play of the year. That's all on the Visa Halftime. All right, Kurt. Nine yards on the pass play. Hunter on the second and one. I'm not sure he went anywhere. Clemens is there. Mm -hmm. 
No, nope, no gain on the play. They mark a third and one. Hunter, Hunter will get the first down. Hunter is through. He trips, crosses midfield. 23 yards on the run. And a first down. And, and as this run unfolds, what was going through my head, the timeout called by Jim Harbaugh on the goal line situation. A lot of people are wondering, why would you call timeout there when you're on defense and their team's trying to score? It's for this situation to get the ball back and have a chance to go downfield. The defense ended up doing a great job. They held them to a field goal. Now they didn't even give up a touchdown. Now they've got the ball on offense with a chance to counter right before the half. Jim Harbaugh showing confidence in his offense and of course his defense using that timeout. So the 49ers now with one timeout and after that big run. They've got a chance here to get some points on the board. Remember Akers has hit from 53 yards out. Missed an earlier one in the first quarter but came back for the 53 yarder. Plenty of range. I believe he's seven of nine for the year from 50 yards or more. Seahawks bring pressure. Quick turn route, man to man coverage. And it's well covered. Browner working on Edwards. Plenty of talking going on out there. If you're Brandon Browner, it's 6'4, 221. 6'3, 214 of Braylon Edwards is not going to intimidate you. That's exactly what you're looking for is a tall corner, a long corner. Because change of direction against the little guys is what's going to bother you more when you're that size in frame. <laughs> Braylon That's Edwards, right. thank you. Yeah. Loves having him out there. That's called being able to match up. <laughs> Plenty of time for Smith. Batted away. Clemens. Clemens gets hit, gets credit for batting the ball away, but watch why he had an opportunity. Look at this coverage by Browner. Right there on the move, right there on the move, still sticking right in his hip pocket. Can't get rid of it. Alex Smith wants to go in that direction, but that would have been a tight fit. Chris Clemens bats the football away. 49ers, two of six on third down thus far. Got a crosser, looking for his crosser. He's got it well short of the first down. Nice coverage on Vernon Davis by Cam Chancellor. And a timeout called by the 49ers. 26 seconds left. So a look at the playoff picture. What Detroit is doing to San Diego is bad news for Seattle. San Francisco, they've locked up the division as we've already talked about, but they want to get that first round by and a guaranteed rest hand the first home game. And New Orleans plays on Monday night against Atlanta at home. So you've got to make sure you're trying to keep pace. What they're trying to do is like a golfer. They want post to score today <laughs> and go in the clubhouse and sit back and wait and see what New Orleans is going to do. Because they're going to need, you know, everybody needs Green Bay to lose twice. And, you know, forget that part. You're trying yeah. to lock down what you can handle. And that's right. where San Francisco is right now. It's too, probably too far for a punt. It's a fourth down, 26 seconds left. You like the call? I do, because it's too far for a punt and too far for a field goal. All right? I might say too far, too close for a punt. Don't give up the ball here. Go for it and try and pick it up. Ball's out. Incomplete. Williams is screaming flag. He won't get it. Nice coverage there by Roy Lewis. Right now, the front and the back of Seattle's defense are matching very well. Nice. The pressure in the front side mirroring the secondary coverage. Lewis, 34 inside the slot on Williams. A little hand fighting in there. Yeah, Williams there's should no be call. quiet. If anything, <laughs> they're going to call a push off on offense. Yeah, there's no call. There's no call to be made there. You guys work it out. All right? It's like your parents. All right, you guys take it in the backyard, work it out. Well, now the 
49er defense has to work it out. 21 seconds left. Seattle's going to try to get one more score in before the half. The protection hold. There's one coming through late. And he throws it away up top. That was Justin Smith, the guy who has been great this season. Now with 169 consecutive starts at D-line, that leads all active defensive linemen putting the pressure on. 15 seconds left in the half. And Tavares Jackson got rid of the football, didn't take the sack, and he did it skillfully because he was in the pocket. Yeah. So he had to throw the ball in a spot where it appeared there was a receiver. Right? Someone had to be in the area. If he's out of the pocket, he can just go ahead and get rid of it as long as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Jackson, avoiding the loss of yardage. You see his numbers here today. Second and ten on the move, empty backfield, another throw away. The 49er defense, particularly the secondary, in pocket. And the difference there, he was out of the pocket, didn't have to worry about a receiver in the area, throw it over the sideline, make sure it gets back to the line of scrimmage. Twice now he's made nice throwaways, but that doesn't help Seattle move the football downfield. The San Francisco defense earning and living up to their reputation as the number one defense in the NFC. Nine seconds left, seven-point game. 49ers came this close, as you say, from losing that moniker of no rushing touchdown throughout the year. Check down throw to four set, four set. But a timeout now called Pete Carroll. Boy, he was doing some jumping jacks on the sideline trying to get that timeout yeah. called after the 12 yard catch and the first down. Timeout. The man got to decide exactly what do you do with two seconds left on the clock. I don't think they'll be running Steven Hauschka out because that would be a, a 62 one. yard field goal attempt if you're running him out there now 62 63 yard field goal attempt this one this this settles much more into the Hail Mary Big Ben mm -hmm. whatever teams want to name it cat category trying to throw one deep and try and pick up one in the end zone the visa halftime show coming up next the guys will have all the highlights and scores and stats from around the league Some big games big plays all the exciting action. 49ers got three deep, looking to knock this one away. That one goes out of bounds. And that is the end of the first half. The Seahawks up by seven. And a physical game on both sides. Right now, we send you to Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime Report. slash NFL and we're ready to start the second half here in Seattle we've got a 10-3 game the Seahawks got off to a quick start and they held on to that start they botched a situation down there by the goal line could have easily been a 14-3 game but we are where we are that being said let's talk about Alex Smith for the 49ers not lighting it up numbers wise but a seven-point game, you're not necessarily unhappy with that, I think, if you're Jim Harbaugh. And I go back to what you just talked about, the goal line stand that leaves them only down seven. So San Francisco can play their style, but they're going to need a little more from Alex Smith. The quarterback who's been so good for them all year long had a rough first half. Six of 15 throwing the football. Only 43 passing yards. His previous low, 124 in the season opener against the Seahawks. They'll need more from him, but he needs help from his friends. His receivers have to find a way to uncover themselves. There were some drops in the first half. Vernon Davis on a crossing route. Michael Crabtree had a chance to make a spectacular catch, unable to come up with it. But a few times, guys just could not get open. They've got to find a way to solve that because the coverage has been tremendous from the Seattle Seahawks, and that's allowed the pass rush to get in the face of Alex Smith. And so has Marshawn Lynch for rush, 14 rushes, 83 yards. He's done his part out of the end zone. Williams, Williams looking for a hole and gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go down to Drea Avent. Well, I talked to Coach Harbaugh, and he said he wants the pass defense to continue 
to get better as this game progresses. He was very concise. He said he liked the energy that his team showed down the stretch of that second quarter, but he said we have to wrap it up because Seattle's offense in the second half is one of the best in the league. And as far as Coach Carroll is concerned, he said we need to continue to grind it out on the ground, but we also want to test that secondary because that's going to give us the best chance to win. And when I asked him about the defense, he said he loved the down linemen and he loves the job the secondary are doing, guys. Well, I don't know how he couldn't. The way that Browner and the guys have been locking up, and you made a great point. Their coverage has matched the pressure, and that's what you hope for as a, as a coach. First play, second half, play action pass. The long sail route is complete to Crabtree. Crabtree still going. And Crabtree is out of bounds at about the 35-yard line of the Seahawks. A pickup of 27 yards working on Browner. And Brandon Browner owned the first half. In the slot, working as Michael Crabtree, number 39. In the first half, Brandon Browner's coverage helped end the drives for the 49ers. First play of the second half, they go right at him. And Michael Crabtree wins that battle and gives the 49ers a nice game to get things started. Crabtree now with four catches, 44 yards. Playing inside that slot is a lot different for a cornerback than outside, especially if you're not used to playing in there. Gore, Gore trying to get outside, a lot of speed. Clemens. Quick look at the first half numbers. We've already talked about Smith at quarterback. There's everything else. And see what's highlighted, yards per pass attempt. 2.4 for the San Francisco 49ers. 5.2 for the Seahawks, I think part in part because the Seahawks throwing the football early in the count against the run defense of San Francisco to help loosen things up. Looking quick, it's not there. He's got to reload it. Great job of coming back to the ball. He won't get a whole lot. Kyle Williams, Williams shaken up on the play, covered by Browner, but that was textbook. Charles, the way he helped Smith out by coming back to the football. Really well done, and Kyle Williams is a player who has really come on, had a terrific offseason, dedicated himself in the weight room, worked a lot with Alex Smith in the offseason, trying to get prepared. And when injuries hit, they've lost Josh Morgan this year, right? <laughs> Braylon Edwards has been hurt for most of the year. He has stepped into the breach and really, really picked up his play. He's active today, Ted Ginn Jr. inactive. Bobble snap, Smith holds on to it somehow. Avoids another one, keeps on moving, gets about two or three yards shy of the first. A nice job showing some toughness there by Alex Smith. Hawthorne had an early shot on him. How about the poise of Alex Smith? Doesn't handle the snap, Wow! but there's no panic. A lot of quarterbacks, that ball's out of their hands. They're throwing it somewhere, getting rid of it. Instead, he holds on to it. That's a snap he probably should have handled. He might have come back with a little extra zip, but he never panicked on the play and made something out of nothing and put them in a fourth down situation where they can go for it. Hill missed that initial tackle. Hawthorne cleaned him up. Fourth down and two. The 49ers have gone for it. Timeout on fourth down San Francisco. in the first half. They call timeout to think about it. A fourth down and about three coming up. And this tells me that Jim Harbaugh believes points are at a premium today. Going forward here rather than punting and trying to play field position. See if he tries to draw him off here. Big Isaac Saplaga in motion. The boot looking for crossers. Throws it up. Did he tippy toe it in? Davis caught it. Yes, it's a catch. Great catch. And that'll be a 49er first down, a pickup of 15. Wait a minute, a flag is down back at midfield. Uh, they're going to get a hold against Seattle. They were trying to hit a throwback pass against Flo. All right, they're trying to hit the throwback pass, and that's where it was, it was actually defended well, and that's why he had to come out to the sideline and throw it downfield. Holding, defense number 92. Our penalties decline. Play results in the first down. And that's Brandon Meebane, the defensive tackle. But watch the end of the play where Alex Smith had to go to the alternate 
the plan B. And he finds Vernon Davis, who gets both feet down for a catch and a big first down on a fourth down play. You got to give Alex Smith a lot of credit on that one, Charles. He, he could have easily panicked and tried to run it, showed some composure. That's Gore inside. He'll get about three or four. He's done that throughout the game, shown that composure in the pocket. His numbers haven't been terrific, but he's never lost that veneer of calm. He stated repeatedly how nice it feels to have a guy like Jim Harbaugh at your side as a quarterback. He's a former quarterback himself. He understands the position. He understands the things that go along with the position. He gave him an opportunity early just to prove himself to Jim Harbaugh, not past reputation being that he was judged up. Play action. Zone coverage. Man leaks free. Another tippy toe out of bounds catch by Davis. That's twice in this drive alone. That's good for 16. And I think this is a nice throw, too, by Alex Smith because he had to get it over the underneath coverage. She watched Davis running the route with Leroy Hill bumping him. And see, it's right there. And 90 are reporting eligible. Alex Smith had to throw that ball over the top of Leroy Hill and fit it in there to give Vernon Davis an opportunity to get both toes down for a first down. Secured the ball. Ball did not move. It's a good catch. There's a defensive tackle. So far, right there. He lead blocks. This is pure power football. Gore, Gore is in. Touchdown, 49ers. And Gore has had success against the Seattle Seahawks, his two best rushing performances as a 49er, both against Seattle. Over 200 yards in each in each case. How about that bringing in Isaac Sopoaga? You noticed that maneuver earlier <laughs> before half. Comes back to haunt a little bit. All of a sudden, we've got a tie game here in this NFC West showdown. The 49ers take the first possession in the second half and put up points. As befits a physical game as we've seen today, you would think you'd have an Iron Man, a guy who goes both ways, plays offense and defense. Isaac Sopoaga, number 90, is one of those guys. He comes into the game and helps launch a touchdown. Look at Jim Tom Sula, the defensive line coach, telling Jim Harbaugh, you know something? You can say thank you. I let you, I let you have one of my guys, and we scored a touchdown. Well, that's well over 600 pounds of beef, though, in that backfield. They also had Bruce Miller, a converted D lineman in college, leading through the hole. They have done a great job on Leon Washington. C.J. Spillman running down 21 yards on that return. We have a 10-10 game because of a great goal line stand by San Francisco, aided a bit by Seattle with poor <laughs> execution on third and short. And now, San Francisco has momentum going their way. Seattle getting the ball backed up in their own end. They'll try Lynch. Well, let's go back to that goal line stance right before the half. This is second down carry by Marshawn Lynch, and actually reviewed it to make sure he did not get into the end zone. He did not. Third down, most people were moving, but not enough for Seattle. And San Francisco with a nice tackle by Carlos Rogers. Keeps Tavares Jackson out of the end zone forces them into a field goal. So instead of a potential 14 to three lead, it became a 10 to three lead and now we're tied. Lynch again, they're trying to get Lynch going. Lynch, as we said, coming out at the half here, he was over 80 yards rushing, had started to really pound on this 49er defense, a defense that comes in ranked number one against the rush. And you notice as we start the second half, starting the ball on their own 15-yard line or so, the staff of the Seahawks did not elect to have Tavares Jackson throw on the early downs. They ran it twice, bringing up third and five. Late throw. 
And that's incomplete. And that'll bring on the punt unit. Bowman. As we started this half, watch the guys in the middle. Okay? Watch the pressure coming right up the gut. And Navarro Bowman with a spin move. Takes out Tavares Jackson. As we started this game, Patrick Wills was exhorting his teammates that you throw punches moving forward, not backwards. We just saw the 49ers defensive line throw the proverbial punch forward going at Tavares Jackson. Ryan drives this one out. Not much height on it, but boy, that thing went a long way, all the way back to the 15. Williams is through. Williams still going. A great return by Kyle Williams subbing in for Ted Ginn Jr. That's 36 yards, puts the ball on the other side of the 50, and great field position once again for the 49er offense. And the field position started with the kickoff. They start them deep in their territory. They can't move the ball on the punt. Kyle Williams changes field position again by moving the football upfield on an excellent punt return. Now they start the ball on the plus side of the 50-yard line in Seattle territory. And the 49ers have the momentum going their way. You see an extra bounce in their step right now. Moving to the line of scrimmage. Seattle has to find a way to combat it. 64-yard punt. Gore tripped up just as he got across the line of scrimmage. Allen Branch. And he knew it, too. Did you see him get up off the pile? Pointed up, pointed himself right to the shoulders. Don't forget, you can get coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile. Just pick up your phone, hit star, star, NFL right now. Yeah, Gore knew he might have a chance for a bigger run. You <laughs> see, he came up near yeah. pointed. My bad. That's on me. <laughs> Movement early by both tackles. Staley moved on one side, Davis on the other. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. We remain second down. Down to Los Angeles for an update. Here's Kirk. A win by the Lions not only will put them in the playoffs for the first time since 99, but. Plus their first 10 win season since 1995. Kevin Smith doing his part. They lead 31 to 10 starting the fourth quarter. Ron and Charles. The Seahawks need a loss by the Lion, not a win. But they've got to take care of their own Lion here called the 49ers. We've got a tie game. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter breaks through the line. Almost went down the sideline. Cam Chancellor making the perfect sideline open field tackle. That's a lot of man right there. 6'3", 232. Looks like a linebacker. Hits like a linebacker, but can cover in the secondary. And was at Virginia Tech and had an assistant coach tell him, with your size and speed, they're going to want to move you to linebacker. <laughs> Don't let them. Don't you are a safety them. who can play. Went to Virginia Tech as a quarterback. He sustained some big fines earlier in the season for it. Dropping the wood on people, but that hasn't affected the way he's played. This is a third and eight. Smith. He's got plenty of room. The first down, then some. Smith down to the Seahawks 31 yard line. 11 yards and a first for the 49ers. And how decisive was he on the decision to take off and go? No hesitation. But watch what he helped, what the, watch the help he's going to get downfield. Braylon Edwards running a route against Brandon Brown or nothing there. Now he turns into a blocker. And he doesn't clip. Well done by Braylon Edwards. Occupied him enough to let Alex Smith go by. But watch Alex Smith. He just saw it and went. Very well done from the pocket. Heel in motion. Sets back up. That's Gore. Now here goes Frank Gore. Gore, depending on the spot, will have a first down. He's got 11 yards. The first half, I was talking about the offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks, how they seem to be coming together and feeling good about the run game. Feeling the same thing now about the San Francisco 49ers offensive line. Adam Snyder at right guard, Anthony Davis at right tackle, Mike Yapati at left guard, Joe Staley at left tackle, anchored by Jonathan Goodwin in the middle. 
They have that look about them right now that says, Coach, let's run this football. We feel good. First and 10, give Gore. Gore with the stiff arm, almost scored, and that's going to be a horse collar on Richard Sherman. Personal foul, the legal horse collar tackle, defense number 25. Half the distance to the goal, first down. First half, you talked about how well Richard Sherman would come up and play against the run as a corner. He's trying to do that again here, and Gore with the straight arm almost knocks him off and reaching out trying to get a piece of Frank Gore as Richard Sherman. He gets the horse collar and the additional yardage tacked on. We just Number mentioned Justin Peel's name in there a few plays ago. He subbed in, but Delaney Walker out with a head injury. His return is questionable. Gore straight ahead, clipped backwards, hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Leroy Hill. It's a nice play by Leroy Hill because the 49ers have established the offensive line as theirs, that line of scrimmage. And on that play, Leroy Hill flipped it. He flipped the script by getting in the, pit, the penetration and forcing the stop early in the run. But I'm not so sure how daunted they will be. If they throw the football here, think Vernon Davis, tight end. He's got a crosser. Motions, throws back across his body, knocked away. Great play by Earl Thomas. Well, you know what happens when you throw late across the middle. He's fortunate it was only knocked down and not <laughs> intercepted. Right. But he was trying to get Vernon Davis on that route. That was the call initially. Because now what he had was Davis, where he's directing him to go back against the flow. And Earl Thomas plays center field and comes back and see, he wants Davis there. Right 50 is covering. Now he directs him back against the flow. Thomas sees it and knocks it away. Edwards up top, Crabtree in the slot, Williams down below. Give to Gore, Gore needs a block. Slip, still going, Gore on his feet, takes it down to the one yard line. A flag is down at the three. Saw Braylon Edwards blocking earlier in this series. Could this play be in the, the same spot? The back. Offense number 17. Ten-yard penalty. Big third down. Earlier in the series, he blocked, and he did a nice job of not clipping or holding. On this one, he comes down inside to seal and just pushes Earl Thomas right in the back and knocks him over. You'll see it right there. Wow. And you see him knocking number 29 back into the pile with a two-hander. That looked a little bit more like a hockey check <laughs> than a football block. And that hurt him on that play, sets up another third down. Now you move, it moves you out of your manageable, very manageable situation there. Ball spotted about the one, now that ball spotted at the 13. And remember, this is a team tuning up for the playoffs. Braylon Edwards has not played much in recent weeks. So his rust needs to be knocked off in a hurry. Otherwise, that costs you when the playoffs begin. They go to Hunter, and Hunter has nothing. Hill is there along with Hawthorne. And the 49ers will have to try for three. I know people at home are saying, why that call there? What are you doing? All right, why not a shot in the end zone? Now, Akers has been nearly automatic from this distance this, this year. Kick the field goal, take the lead, and see what happens. For his 40th field goal of the season, 29 yards out, and it's clean. And he has just tied Neil Rackers for the most field goals in a single season at 40. And the 49ers with that will take a three-point lead, but here comes the beast, Marshawn Lynch.
Braylon Edwards on the bench after a costly penalty. It would have set up fourth and short, partner. Instead, they end up having to go third and long, end up running the draw inside. Braylon Edwards hadn't played much in recent weeks. Had knee surgery in September, never really gotten untracked here, and he just cost his ball club a chance at a touchdown. Washington three yards deep. Clipped down just outside the 10-yard line. Oh, here we go again. Lynch coming up, 13-10, 49ers. Well, we've talked about this, the 49ers haven't given up a rushing touchdown this year or a 100-yard rusher this year. Marshawn Lynch is close. 16 carries, 88 yards. 36 games has been since they've given up a 100-yard rusher. And by the field position here, tough on the Seahawks, but they're spreading it out and they'll throw it on first down. A high one. A high, hot one over the middle. Intended for Miller. Flag is down in the backfield. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Offense number 68. Penalized half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. And that's Brino Giacomini, the tackle. Yeah, and, and they like him. They like his attitude, they like his nastiness. They seem to have to rein it in a little bit, and there's an example getting yeah. a, a tough penalty. But now we're talking about Marshawn Lynch and running the football, 88 yards, trying to get to 100. The pride of the 49ers defense and not letting a 100-yard rusher, that comes into play. That's a big, big deal. But even more important with this field position, Marshawn Lynch is very important to the Seahawks right now. I don't know how much they're going to throw it. Boy, he gets hit hard right in the hole there, Bowman. Man to man. You know, you talk to the 49ers, to the players, the staff, they'll tell you from last year, they weren't sure how good Navarro Bowman could be in a game time situation as the guy. They knew what they saw in practice, and he impressed them a lot. And he was an outside linebacker at Penn State, more of a will, one of those guys who would run and chase and space right. and hit. And he's turned himself into a heck of an inside linebacker in tandem, usually with the all pro Patrick Willis, who's not playing today. Another quick throw. You can see the 49er defense everywhere, and Bowman everywhere. That ball complete to Tate, but when you've got that kind of pursuit and break on the ball, it's hard to move it. Look the eyes, clued in. He's done his film study. He knows what they like to do in situations. Reads the play, makes the tackle. And what's happened now is the 49ers defense is dictating to Seattle's offense because they're worried about Tavares Jackson pushing the ball downfield in this situation. Short throws that they're reacting on and breaking up short. Third and long. Throw incomplete. Intended for Baldwin. Rodgers is in the area, and that's fourth down time to punt for see, Seattle. See Patrick Willis celebrating on the sideline. This is why the Seattle offense is really concerned and why they were concerned in that situation, especially after the penalty with field position. Look at what they're running against or throwing against. They're giving up nothing in points. All the touchdowns, 18 were through the air because no one's run the ball into the end zone against them. That's what you're battling. And right now, the 49ers defense is doing the dictator. So John Ryan busy here. A nice return last time out by Williams. And here's another one. He's down the sideline and out of bounds. A flag is down, but another nice return for Kyle Williams. Literally hit that one running, caught it on the run and hit it at top speed. Flag is down on the other side of the field on During the 49er the side. Illegal block in the back. Number 51 of the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. That's one of their hustlers. That's Blake Costanzo. Fifth yeah. year man out of Lafayette getting popped. One of the better special teams players in the league. They watch as it comes into the picture. He just inadvertently ran into Marigos 42 and got nailed for an illegal block in the back. Marigos actually got thrown into his, his line there. So I don't think that's one of those ones that the coaches, when they watch film, are going to ding Blake Costanzo for. You know, <laughs> the penalty counts on the field. 
but they won't find him or, or yeah. bring down his grade because that's really not a penalty on him. You just saw Frank Gore's numbers there, the last drive, 10 plays. Not able to get it in for the touchdown, but they were able to get it in. The three points to make it. Hunter, Hunter, still going. This January, FX and Fox are so your home for exciting live UFC action with more than 10 epic fights on three incredible nights featuring some of the sport's best up-and-coming fighters as well as title contenders looking to earn their shot at the belt. A month of outstanding live UFC action begins on Saturday, January 14th on FX. And what I'm noticing in the run game of San Francisco now, Seattle's a good tackling team. But they're making yards after contact now. Initial contact is still getting a little bit extra. That's why it's at second and five instead of second and seven. Five yards on that last play. Timeout called by Alex Smith. Timeout. 49ers now San Francisco. with one timeout left. And Howard not happy. 30 second timeout. Ron Pitts, Charles Davis now. All of a sudden, the 49ers have taken back control of this game, not only points-wise, but physically. Yeah, I think the line of scrimmage now belongs to the 49ers, both sides, because they're getting pressure on Tavares Jackson. They're not leaving any creases in the run game for Marshawn Lynch on their first couple of series on defense. On offense, that line is starting to chop holes in the front of the, of the Seattle Seahawks defensive, defensive line. But the running backs are doing a really nice job of creating even more out of every snap. Running through contact, spinning, not going down easy. 49ers offensive line and runners are working together in tandem well. Five yards by Hunter on the last run. Four, four, first down. You know, one number that really says it all for the 49ers' success this season, the giveaway-takeaway ratio, a staggering plus 25, number one in the NFL. It's amazing, actually. And they lead in takeaways, 35. And they lead in taking care of the football, only 10 turnovers all year, to get to that plus 25 number. So they're leading in every possible category on takeaways, giveaways. Those are numbers that then allow you to go deep in the playoffs. Turnaround pitch, Hunter. Hunter, not much. Earl Thomas came up along with Hawthorne. And today, both teams, no turnovers, but again, the 49ers holding true, not giving up the football. It goes a long way. It goes, when you can take care of it, and you have to, if you play the way the 49ers play. Because if you look at their other offensive numbers, there's not a lot that jumps out at you, right? Yeah. It's not like yeah. they're shredding you in, in other ways. They have to take care of the ball in order to play their style. Otherwise, they're in big trouble because they're not built as a comeback sort of a team. Second and eight, Hunter. He's got a lane. Hunter, easy first down. Pushed out of bounds by Chancellor. A pickup of seven. Make it nine officially. There's Red Bryan, who's really the anchor of the defensive line. And look at the block there by Bruce Miller, number 49. You mentioned him earlier. A defensive end in college at UCF. Was an All-American. Double digits in sacks for three years there. They moved him over to fullback. This is his ninth start of the year. Has moved in ahead of Moran Norris, who got hurt earlier this year, and has really done a nice job becoming a lead blocker for Frank Gore. And that will be the end of the third quarter. The 49ers up three. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages. OK, you got your choice. You want San Francisco, Santa, Seattle, Santa. Now, I understand we're Switzerland up here. We have no preferences. But do you go traditional red suit? Or do you like his alternate blue suit that he wants to change up in, the, in this holiday season? Which way you want to go? Well, I'm going to stay neutral so I don't get any conflicts with Santa. That's the last thing I need in my life. But I'll tell you this. Our national radar defenses tell us that Santa right now is in Portugal heading this way. 
Just a note. Plenty of time for Smith. No pressure whatsoever by the Seahawks. And Hunter will get out of bounds, but get the first down before he does. Rick Bryant hustles down for the tackle. How many times have we talked about Alex Smith being cool in the pocket today? How about this example? Because what they want is a big shot here. They're taking the shot downfield. Little roll back, throw down, throw, throw back action. He wants Crabtree deep. Browner's covering it, so he can't get the ball to Crabtree. So what does he do? He comes all the way back across field. Nice throw on the check down and gets it out to Gore. Alex Smith is playing quite well in the second half. Gore. Ahead, not much. Meebane is there. Were you surprised, Charles, in the Seahawks' last series when they were backed up that they didn't run the ball more with Lynch? I was surprised because, mainly because of field position. Because they were back, they started around their own 15, and they had not shown that proclivity towards throwing the ball with Tavares Jackson in the early downs when field position wasn't in their favor. So during the game, when they had good field position, they threw it with them in the early downs. Then they would go, they would tuck it in a little bit. On that series, they didn't. He doesn't touch it much. Field position changed in a big way and helped the 49ers. And the 49ers are just going to go into ground mode here. Nice play in the backfield. Clements is there with Meebane. Another look at the playoff picture. Green Bay, of course, the top seed right now. They've won the division along with the 49ers. 49ers trying to get that first round by in a playoff game at home. Then Green Bay plays tomorrow night. Okay, against Chicago, I believe against Chicago. That's right. And then Atlanta and New Orleans, who they're also dealing with, New Orleans, they play on Monday night. So San Francisco has to win today to sit there and tell those other two, you've got to keep winning. Otherwise, we may lock up one of those spots and get that coveted by. There goes only two. Green Bay looks like they have a hammer lock on one of them. Third and nine. Seahawks bring pressure. Chancellor chasing. And he forces the throw away. Good job by the Seahawks defense. And a nice decision. You know we're giving up three here, essentially, because of where the ball is, right? At the 26-yard line. You know as a defense, Akers is accurate. So they decided to go out, put the pressure on him, and try and alter that. Alex Smith's movement, as you talked about, saved a field goal opportunity for San Francisco. This is for the record, field goals made in a single season. It's holding, holding, and it's through. So David Akers now has the most field goals in a single season at 41. And he adds to the 49ers point total a six-point lead here in the fourth. Sixteen ten. Jim Harbaugh was hot there. We saw a picture of him right before we went to break. Probably because he thought maybe somebody legally jumped over the line of scrimmage or used leverage to try to block the field goal. That actually came up on Monday night against Pittsburgh, where once it, he believed it wasn't called, and later in the game it was. They actually benefited from that call. Washington, boy, he's had rough sledding all day long. Out to the 15. What do you think? Leverage, no leverage, whatever. Looked like That's he just put his hands on him and left through. <laughs> That's three field goals today, and a record for Akers. David Akers brought in as a free agent this season, the five-time Pro Bowler, 12 years in Philadelphia, comes in, and this year has a year, setting the NFL single-season record for field goals at 41. Three today. That's been a big difference in this game. That ball popped up and for grabs. Lockett can't hold on. And see, Jim Harbaugh takes his leverage and leaping. He got that call on Monday night against Pittsburgh. See that? He's talking about him. Leverage. But this is why it's not. Watch 94. As he goes through, he's not leaping above. He's using the lineman, and that's legal to get himself propelled through and then leaps for the field goal attempt. So it's not a penalty. That's why it's not called. For that play, Jackson, 11 of 20, 117, and a touchdown. Things have slowed down for this Seahawk offense. They got off to a quick lead and actually hit the man who just dropped the last ball. Lockett hit him on a big one. And they were able to get a touchdown on that opening drive there with Doug Baldwin 13 yards out. 
but since then things have been quiet and quiet for that man okay we talked about his skittles but the skittles haven't done much here in the second half well, the skittles shoes you know, we talk about it's got to be the shoes they're gonna need those shoes to pump up a little bit now and go on shoes of marshawn lynch this is the third and seven going deep a man falls down and there's the flag now all intended for obamanu but one side screaming push, the other side screaming well, based, interference. Based on the guy who went down, you would think it would go against the offense because the guy who went down was the defender, but That's I'm not sure it's going to go that way. Defense number 25. Terrell Terrell Brown. The foul and a first down. And talk about bailed out. They had him third and seven. Contact there is fine. He gets more hands on him. Obamato runs a physical route and actually throws him to the ground. And Tavares Jackson has to take the shot from Alden Smith, who's been a sensation as a rookie, as a pass rusher, stays in there and delivers downfield. But both of them were being physical in the route running. Obamato ends up winning the physical battle and getting the call. That call ends up being a 27-yard play. Bootleg, throwback. It's not there. Jackson doing it himself will take it down to about the 48 49 yard line before he's met by Ray McDonald and Seattle is back to throwing early in the count first down good field position and they actually did it with poor field position missed the first two throws bailed out by Terrell Brown and the pass interference call then they get good field positions so of Daryl Bevel who we just saw on the sidelines dials up another pass play Tried for a big shot on a throwback. Covered well by San Francisco. Bringing up second down. Second and eight play action. Well covered and there's the sack. The guy we just talked about, Alden Smith. Now a half a sack away from the NFL rookie sack record. Yeah, set by the freak himself, Javon Curse with the Tennessee Titans in 99. Watch Alden Smith reads his, his keys with McQuiston, goes right past him after the play action, and puts Jackson down. It was a second and eight play. Now you're bringing up third and a heck of a lot longer than that. Half a sack will tie him with first. Throw, catch, short of the first down. Goldson put the hit on Obamanu. But how about the pickup in yardage? Because now yeah, it forces they got a decision. It back. They got back a whole bunch of yardage on that one. Now you got to decide what you're going to do if you're Seattle. It looks like they're bringing the punting unit onto the field to try and set up some field position and play defense. What do you think, though? They haven't really been able to stop Alex Smith in this offense. See, in this situation here, I would have thought about going for it for this reason. Points are at a premium in this game anyway. Right. Not sure you'll get a better opportunity the way this game has gone in the second half. So they'll play field position, and they'll put it all on Ryan. And Ryan may have done it. That ball goes out of bounds. I think they're calling touchback. Nope, they're calling touchback. It hit the pylon, or a player hit the pylon. They will call touchback. The 49ers will not be in the hole. They'll get the ball on the 20. Let's look again. You see, Mara goes 42. He's, he's running the line anyway. Touching the football, it hits the pylon. Touchback. Yep. Good hustle by Mara goes, but he's unable to keep it out of the end zone. Official right on the spot. You know, if you've ever refuted that old adage it's a game of inches you won't after looking at that <laughs> that's how close it was to maybe being a really good call by Pete Carroll but instead now it's 49er ball with 924 here and a six point lead at the 20 yard line and they've been very effective running the football I think Seattle will, will stack the line of scrimmage to try and stop them on this first down play no fear play action moving sliding there's your crosser. That's Davis. Davis, good job of ad living and getting the first down. He works out just past the 35-yard line. Well, for 100 years, no prisoner had ever escaped from Alcatraz until the night they all vanished. 
uncover the mystery behind America's most notorious prison. From J.J. Abrams and the producers of Lost comes a thrilling new series, Alcatraz, premiering Monday, January 16th, right here on Fox. And that's starring Mr. Sam Neill, one of the best in the business, and that promises to be a good showing. Oh, it's a great tour. I know that. I've been out there before. That's awesome. But how about the trust they're showing in Alex Smith here on that first down throw? First down toss. Gore going sideways. Hawthorne. And Alex Smith has been a tale of two halves. In the first half, it was a struggle. Takes the hit from Chris Clemens, throws the ball away. There's a sack against him where he can't get it downfield. But right, at, right away in the second half, that was his first throw of the second half to Michael Crabtree. Then on the same drive, back-to-back -back throws to Vernon Davis. Feathery touch, and then being decisive in and out of the pocket, running for a first down. Alex Smith has looked like the Alex Smith we've seen for most of the season here in the second half. And Davis has helped his numbers. Four catches, 54 yards. They've all been big catches, catches that have amounted in first downs. Ad-lib throw, that's out to Miller. And Miller taken down quickly by Earl Thomas. Go back to what I said a moment ago about trust. If you think about it with Alex Smith, that's not a word you've heard often from many of the guys who have coached him or different regimes. But Jim Harbaugh approached him right away when he got the job. And when we talked with Alex Smith, he said he was waiting for him to talk about, let's talk about all the other stuff. Well, he talked about was football right from the beginning. And all from, from that first day, they built a relationship that now is full of trust. Smith about to go over career high passing yards. Nope, that one knocked away, intended for Williams. Richard Sherman, who's been in the backfield on tackles and involved in pass coverage all over the field today, knocks it away and will get the ball back for the Seahawks. And the 49ers bench led by their head coach, Jim Harbaugh, erupted, thinking there had to be pass interference on that play, saying he came over the top through his body to try and get the football. Top of the screen, Sherman 25 on the coverage. See, from there, it looks like he reaches an arm around. What the 49ers are trying to say is that he was draped on his back while reaching the arm around. No call from the officials. They'll punt it away. So Andy Lee standing at his 24. Will punt it. It's blocked. That's a free ball. October 19th, after five years in Minnesota as a backup, comes up with a huge play at the right time. And Ron, let's go back to Pete Carroll's decision to punt the football that I disagreed with. I thought he should have gone for it out near midfield. Didn't know if he'd get a better opportunity. They punted it, the defense made it stand up, and then on the ensuing try to kick it away, they blocked the punt, and now they're in business inside the five-yard line of San Francisco. Credit to the head coach of, Se of Seattle understanding his team. So just like that, it's great field position and a chance for Seattle. Lynch, Lynch, looking for that first rushing touchdown against the 49ers this season. And there it is. gone the entire season without giving up a rushing touchdown or a 100 yard rusher one of those just fell the extra point is clean and we talked about turnovers being a premium the blocked field goal turns into points and the seahawks 
take a one point lead with 641 here in the fourth. First rush touchdown allowed 15 games this season, today being the 15th. The longest previous streak, 13 games, the Decatur Staleys in 1920, who later became the Chicago Bears, led by Papa Bear, George Hallis. See, look at George Hallis right there in the middle. There's Papa Bear as a kid. How about him? <laughs> Leading that team. You know there were five future Hall of Famers on that football team. Brought that Papa up. Bear being yeah. one of them. George Trafton, another. Jimmy Konzelman, who later played for the Providence Steamroller. Big time stuff, but what's important here is that the Seahawks are up one. And we've talked about the 49ers, already a playoff team. This is when you find out what type of a playoff team you can be. Down one, hostile territory, less than seven minutes ago in the game. They're getting the football. And the insiders around the NFL have been talking that talk all week long. Yes, it was a big game last week in the win against Pittsburgh on Monday night. But the mark of a good team, an 11-3 team, can you get a win on the road against a team that by all means you should beat after a big game? And here is, here's their opportunity. They've, they've had four fourth quarter comebacks already this year under Alex Smith. Here's his opportunity to fashion together a fifth. Auschka puts us in play. Williams, he's had some nice punt returns today. Can he do it on the kick? He slides down at the 24-yard line. 25-yard return. Let's see if the ball was out. Flag is down. I think it's going to be a hit after Williams went down and appeared the run was over. I think they're going to talk about a bad hit. And there's a man injured. It's over. It's over. And if Jim Harbaugh's right in the middle trying to get guys out of the scrum and check on his injured player, I believe. He's hurt. He's hurt. Come on. Kyle Williams. Everybody give him some room. Give him some Maybe room. the man down. Give him room. Give him room. See, I think what give happened, Ron, was on the return as Williams slipped Let and went down. Work. And there was contact from the backside. A player probably believed the play was not over and really clobbered him from the backside. Watch Williams running the football. See, he, he slips here. Now he's down. But is he down yet? See, he hadn't been contacted. Oh, that's what so happened. both of them went and tackled him. And that's when the ball came free at that point. See, the determination. See, he only hit his own player. He does not hit, or anyone from the Seahawks did not touch him until the tackle occurred, and that knocked the ball free. There's a slip. Only contact with a 49er. And then they hit him and knocked the ball free. So I think they've got a few things I'll have to consider on this play. Kyle Williams down. We'll check on him when we come back. Ron Pitts, Charles Davis, Dre Haven on the sideline. If you're just checking in with us, things just got started. A blocked punt led to the first rushing touchdown against the 49er defense this season. And this just happened after Kyle Williams fell down, not contacted. He thinks the play is done, disappointed. Play is still alive, but then flags came because of the hit. And, and the way Mike, we had a chance to talk with Mike Pereira, our rules expert in the break. And what he told us is that when the runner goes down, even on his own, you cannot punish a downed runner with tackles like that. They needed a two-hand tag off on him. That rule even dates back to 1976. And that's what the penalty flag came out for. Ron Winter. On a kickoff return, the runner went to the ground on his own. While he was on the ground, number 26 hit him helmet to helmet, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 26 for the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Michael Robinson, the former, former San Francisco 49er. Right now, we bring in our NFL experts standing by in the studio. That's Mike Pereira. And Mike, give us your thoughts on that. Right ruling by Ron Winter. Number one, when the runner goes down on his own, the second he is touched, he is down by contact. And he didn't lose control of the ball till after that. And secondly, you cannot punish 
a runner who is already down on the ground with your helmet or just a piling on. Both done in that same instance on that play. And here's another look at it as we've got yet another flag down. See, he's down here, and as Mike talked about, he's not down by, by contact yet. But since he's down, you cannot punish him. With the two tackles coming, if they just two-hand tagged off on him, they're okay. Offense number 17. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That call goes against Braylon Edwards. Mike, thank you very much. That's exactly what we saw on the field. Thank you for clearing that up for us, because for a while there, a lot was going on. Yeah, that was Michael Robinson, you the special got it, teams guys. captain. Thanks, Mike. Sorry, Michael Robinson, special teams captain, is involved in that play. And a tough play earlier in the first half where they didn't get a touchdown. But now the defense has a chance to make a big play, first and 20. Six penalties, 77 yards for the 49ers. Hunter in the backfield. He'll get the call. The Seattle defense stiffening up. That's about two or three. If you're just checking in, starting the third quarter, had a 10-10 game. Then the 49ers took the opening possession down, not able to score, but got three from Akers. Akers has had a nice game. He has set the NFL record for most field goals in a single season. We just had a block punt that led to a touchdown by Seattle. The Seahawks have just taken the lead by one as a result of that touchdown. Second and 18 throw. It's tight coverage, and it's caught. Michael Crabtree came up with it. A circus catch, 42 yards, and a crucial moment for the 49ers. You know, Michael Crabtree played in a spread offense in college. And what they talk about with receivers like that is that they have an excellent sense of space and understanding where they are on the field. Michael Crabtree possesses that and also has excellent hand-eye coordination to play off of the body of Browner and go up and get the football. Ball inside the 30-yard line of the Seahawks. Misdirection play, Gore. He'll get about three or four. Chancellor on the tackle. And you've mentioned David Akers a few times, the kicker for the 49ers. He set a new record this year for field goals. Remember, look at the score. It's only a one-point game. So now if you're the 49ers, bleeding clock, and knowing you have David Akers in your hip pocket to give you the lead is a nice comfort zone for a play caller like Jim Harbaugh on the 49ers sideline. Kendall Hunter. Hunter hit hard. Hawthorne and Red Bryant. So you want to be an NFL running back, do you? Maybe not so much. Excellent play by the defensive front. Red Bryant has had a fantastic year. Will not have the sack total numbers to probably send him to Hawaii, but a great year nonetheless. 49ers, 3 of 12 on third down today. They need six at score. He won't get it. On comes Akers. So the Seattle defense does their job. Now the question is, can David Akers continue to do his job? He's done it all day. He's hit from 53, 44, 29. Missed from 52, but set a record in the process of the three made field goals. This is 39. He was four for four on opening day against Seattle in their first win of the year. The man is money. No flags are down. Count it. The tie is broken. The 49ers take the lead by two. Hi, Master Sergeant Martin Aguilera deployed to Afghanistan. I want to wish my wife and kids happy holidays. God bless.
We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's broadcast in 175 countries on AFN, the American Forces Network. Thank you for all you're doing for protecting our freedom here in this country. Six play drive, 40 yards, Akers with the 39 yarder. That's four field goals for him today. Crabtree started off with the 41 yard pass play. This is Washington. Washington still going. Gets hit and will get out to about the 18 yard line. Ron Pitts, Charles Davis. Boy, you got to love these matchups here. NFC West style. The 49ers have already won the division, but they are trying to get that elusive first round bye and get the home field advantage for one game anyways. And, and the way Jim Harbaugh called the last series is because he wanted to put it on his defense, which has played so well all year long. And now it's their opportunity with less than three minutes to go. They have the lead defense on the field against Seattle. Marshawn Lynch, Lynch still fighting for progress. Is called. The 49ers tied for the second best record in the NFC, along with the New Orleans Saints. A win today plus a Saints loss to Atlanta Monday will give the 49ers that first round bye we talked about and at least one playoff game at home. And another record. Falls against the San Francisco 49er defense. Lynch over 100 yards rushing, the first 100 yard rusher of the season. Now he does it out of the backfield with the throw. Lynch down to the 45 yard line, a pickup of 21. That is the two minute warning. The Seattle Seahawks down two. The two minute warning. Under the two minute warning, the 49ers have just taken the lead thanks to a 39 yard field goal by David Akers. I'd like to welcome you from around the country just joining us. We are under the two-minute warning. The 49ers with a two-point lead. The Seattle Seahawks are closing, trying to score. Boy, and it has been that type of game all day long. We see fighting going on. It started in the beginning, and it's continued right up through the fourth quarter. Both teams feel like they've got something to play for. Right, the Seattle Seahawks came in knowing they would need help to try and make the playoffs. They didn't get that help today. Detroit beat San Diego, so that's locked down for them now. But they still wanted to finish strong. They're 3-0 in December. They wanted to have something to carry forward. San Francisco, they're playing for playoff seeding. Second and seven throw out to Lynch. Lynch has gone over the 100-yard rushing mark the first time this year anyone has rushed for over 100 yards against this defense, and this was the key play, the block punt. Recovered by San Francisco, didn't matter. Next play, touchdown. The first rushing touchdown, coupled with the first 100-yard rusher, going both against the 49ers defense, a defense that came in ranked number one in the NFL against the rush. As my partner alluded to, the 49ers, a win today, plus a Saints loss to Atlanta Monday. And a first round by and at least one playoff game at home would be secured for the 49ers. Third and three pressure, Jackson. Jackson loses the football. Free ball. The scramble's on. It looked as though San Francisco recovered it. But we'll see. Yes, they are pointing San Francisco. Larry Grant knocked it out. Jim Harbaugh wanted the field goal, got it, to put the game in the hands of his defense. Larry Grant, who's filling in for the all-pro linebacker Patrick Willis, chops it free. It appears Ray McDonald recovered it for Sarah. Look at the play, the strip from behind as Tavares Jackson tries to make a play to give his team one last opportunity to win 
The play goes the 49ers way. McDonald on the play, recovers it. 49ers in great, great, great position now for the two-point lead. Dante Whitner comes up with it, and that has been the story from this team all season long, ranked plus 25 in the giveaway takeaway ratio. That is number one in the NFL. That is a Super Bowl type of number at this point in the season. And now they'll just try to run it down. That's Gore and Frank Gore on the day. Before that carry, 21 carries, 77 yards. Well, in Seattle, Skittles are the domain of the beast mode runner, Marshawn Lynch. Larry Grant, after that play, says, you know something? I think I want a few Skittles myself. And you know this league, Ron. If you have something that's going for you and it actually goes against you that day, the other team's going to use it against you every time. Came out in the third quarter, a 10-10 game. The 49ers took the first possession, went down the field. Very efficient day for that man, Alex Smith. They're not able to get six, Charles, but they get three, make it a 13-10 game. And catch control for much of the second yep. half with how they played. Timeout situation, San Francisco one light still on. Here, here. Seattle two left. Second and four. Gore. He'll protect the football first. And stay in bounds. Another timeout as Seattle is forced to burn the timeouts. Well, Fox's football coverage doesn't end when the games are over. Afterwards, stick around for the OT. Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy bring you extended highlights, expert analysis, exclusive interviews, and updated looks at the playoff picture. America's number one post-game show, The OT, presented by Lowe's, is coming up after this game right here and, on Fox. And those two, on the left side, Patrick Willis, the All-Pro, who's missed his third straight game with a hamstring injury. His replacement, Larry Grant, his third straight start, comes up with a big play there. Both of them will be interested in finding out what the OT has to say about playoffs and where they're positioned. Although I think they have a pretty good idea. Their stuff's ahead of them. Tomorrow night, Green Bay plays. And Monday night, New Orleans plays. But they've done their job today, barring a miracle of holding serve. Seattle defense trying to get the ball back. A great play almost on Smith. They finally get him down. Earl Thomas came shooting through. Missed the tackle initially but he caused enough fray for his guys to get there. Now, did that surprise you at all? No. That rollout in oh, that, that situation? That, yeah, but they talked about the missed tackle. No, not the yeah. missed tackle. The rollout yeah. in that situation. Yes. yes, that did. Because of the situation where Alex Smith's out of the pocket. That's fine. But what happens a lot, and what did we just see happen to Tavares Jackson? Ball is popped free on tackles, and in that situation, that would have been disaster because Seattle would have been right in field goal position. So Alex Smith does a nice job. Look how he covers up the football, takes care of it, and justifies the faith his coach has in him on a very risky maneuver on that down. No timeouts left for Seattle. The last punt by Andy Lee was blocked. And that's kind of what got us in this position here, this two-point game. Two men are back deep. This will be Leon Washington. He'll take it at the two. He hasn't had a return all day. Out to the 25-yard line. The special teams for San Francisco have been key. Larry Krant caused the fumble. Hustles down for the tackle. 23 yards on the return. And if things hold up, there's your hero of the game for San Francisco. David Akers, broken NFL record. Held by Neil Rackers today, four of five, including what appears what is the go-ahead field goal now to give them a two-point lead. But Tavares Jackson, I'm not sure he thought he'd get another opportunity after his fumble. Here he is. No timeouts left for the Seattle Seahawks. One last shot. Akers hit from 53, 44, 39, 29. 41 seconds left. No timeouts. Pressure. Quick throw. Four set. Four set doesn't get out of bounds. He's got to run to the sideline there. 
I think he was trying to shake him and get to the sideline. This is going to cost him valuable time. He needed to take that one all the way out to the sideline and get out. Ball is clocked. And that's exactly what I was thinking. As soon as he caught the ball, he heads north instead of to the sideline. Situ he had no chance. Situational football. You have no timeouts left. So everything now is sidelines or incomplete passes in order to get the clock stopped. And when he made the move and cut back inside, he gave an advantage to San Francisco. Hey, 23 seconds left, the third and two. No timeouts. Hot one over the middle, it's tipped. That will stop it. We talked earlier, Charles, a big game now for the 49ers in this one by virtue of the fact that last week on Monday night they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in a game that everybody saw. Now this is supposed to be the letdown game. But if you are, and they are what they say they are, 11-3 team, they're supposed to come up here and take care of a team like the Seattle Seahawks. And that's exactly what they've done up to this point. Short week, a little bit of adversity, how you're going to handle it. And this is something that if they do pull it off, that only helps them confidence-wise sprinting towards the end of the season. Looking ahead, how do the San Francisco 49ers fare in the playoff run? Well, I think they've got a team built for the playoffs in a lot of ways because of the defense, right? You've got the defense that, that shuts people down. You don't get much in the run game. That part has been excellent for them. What's going to happen is what happens if your quarterback has to carry you in the playoffs? What if Alex Smith has to have the game on his shoulders He'll have to prove that time and again come playoff time. What they're concerned about here with 18 seconds is make sure we get off the field somehow to get to that playoff run that we're talking about. Because one big play here, field goal range, Seattle Seahawks have an opportunity. Hauschka's long for the year is 52 yards. So they've got to guard all the way up to their own 35-yard line in order to make sure that doesn't happen. So fourth and two. They bring three. Ball's up, and that's it. And that will do it for the Seahawks and the 49ers, barring a miracle, will get the win here in Seattle. And what you talked about just a second ago now comes into play for the San Francisco 49ers. That'll be a part of Jim Harbaugh's post game moving forward next next week's speech. Guys, short week. We just took out a physical team in Pittsburgh. We took out our rival who's physical as heck in Seattle on the road, a tough environment, one of the hardest places in this league to play. And if the Saints lose on Monday, they're going to clinch a first round bye. What, an, what, a, what a turnaround for this 49ers franchise. From general manager Trent Baalke all the way through, Jim Harbaugh being hired as the head coach. And how about this roster coming together and playing so well their 12th win of the year. A team that was 6-10 and ten last year. Mike Singletary fired his head coach. Jim Tomsula took over for the final game. So many questions. People thought the quarterback was going to be gone, but that wasn't the case. Jim Harbaugh came in, laid down a few rules, a few ideas, put some toughness on the field, took a lot of Mike Singletary's toughness. That's the end of the game. And he's turned this team around. They go to 12 and 3. And we'll be watching the Saints. That's it from here in Seattle. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this.